Hi, boys and girls. It's me, Monty, and welcome to our Passion Week podcast. This week, we're going to take a look at a few individuals who were there during the Passion Week. We're going to discuss who they were, the role they played, and the decisions that they made that eventually led to Jesus' crucifixion. I'm joined again by Frankie, Lenny, and Earl. Say hi, guys. Hello, hi. dude. So today, we are going to talk about someone who was very close to Jesus, one of his own disciples. Anyone want to take a guess? James? Not James. Uh, Mark? Um, Mark was not one of his disciples. But any other guesses? Judas? Judas, that's correct. Dun, dun, dun. Thank you for the dramatic effect. We're uh-huh. going to talk about Judas. So when you guys think about Judas, what's something that comes to mind? Well, Monty, I think of someone who was chosen by Jesus to be his disciple, but ended up being a traitor. Yeah, when I think of him, I think of somebody who was trusted enough to be in charge of the money of Jesus's ministry. But also when Jesus said somebody was going to betray him, all the disciples looked to their left and their right and asked if they were the ones going to be the betrayer. So he, he didn't stand out, but he was ultimately a betrayer. That's so true. I mean, they looked at themselves before they could think anyone else could betray Jesus. That had to have been them. They didn't think that it was Judas. Uh, Lenny, what did Earl say? He said, yes, he, he also agrees, but when he thinks of Judas, he thinks of him as a wolf in sheep's clothing. Oh, that's what that sound meant. All right, so when we think about Judas, those are some of the things that come to mind. But when you look at the events that led to Jesus being crucified, you have to look at Judas. What role would you say that Judas had in Jesus being crucified? He was a betrayer. He sold Jesus for like 30 pieces of silver, the price of a slave. Earl wants to remind us the things that Judas did were prophesied in the Old Testament. And I think about how Judas allowed himself to be influenced by the devil rather than listening to the words of Jesus and everything that he was taught prior to this point. Yeah, when I think about it, Judas had every opportunity to make the right decision, but he chose to make the wrong one. He chose to be right in the eyes of men rather than to be right with God. Yeah, yeah, Monty. Like, after he agreed to betray Jesus, he betrayed him in the cover of darkness. And he brought, like, soldiers with him, with, like, swords and stuff, and no amount of soldiers were going to be enough to capture Jesus, like, unless Jesus, like, willingly allowed himself to be captured. I mean, it wasn't going to happen. Right. Like, when I think about it, he had torches, They had a bunch of troops, but that's under the assumption that Jesus was going to run, that they would have to look for Jesus, that Jesus was going to hide. So it clearly shows that he didn't understand the character of Jesus. Very true, Earl. As we look at Judas, we see someone who was chosen for ministry and was to be used by God, but he chose to just follow after his flesh and the desires of his wicked heart. And like you were saying, when he was in the garden, he betrayed Jesus with a kiss. He made it so that even though nobody could tell the difference, Jesus didn't stand out. He didn't have uh, a halo or anything. He just was like a, a average Joe. But Judas chose to betray him as a way you would greet a friend because in that time, a kiss on the cheek was like how you would give somebody a hug. It was to be a warm embrace, and he chose to betray Jesus in that way. Yeah, it's important to see that the decision that Judas made, it came with regret but he didn't have any actual repentance. There are so many things that we can take away from the life of Judas. Earl, what lessons can we learn from Judas? When we look at Judas, we see that his priorities were all wrong. He chose the things of the world rather than Jesus. He chose to give up Jesus. We need to remember that there is nothing worth more than our relationship with Jesus. The question for each of us is, what do we choose to do with Jesus? (coughs) Wow, thank you, Earl. Well, boys and girls, that's all the time we have for today. 
We will see you next time on the Passion Week podcast where we will look at someone else and discuss their role and the decisions that they made during the Passion Week. God bless you guys. Bye. 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 Later.